Okay, so now we are getting pretty close and everything that I'm really showing you now are more nice to haves than must haves. But the one that I wanna show you now is absolutely awesome and that is to create a sellers dashboard that will allow your sellers to basically log in and to see how many sales they're making, how many transactions they're making, how much they're getting paid out, uh, all that type of stuff. And so what we're gonna have to do is set up a workflow that is very similar to the create an onboarding link workflow and that will then allow them to access their seller dashboard. Okay, so the way that we're gonna to have to start off is inside of Airtable, very similar to when we set up our onboarding link, as I just said. And what we wanna do now is we now wanna create a new link that again will be fired by a, uh, a webhook, which we're gonna call dashboard link. And so the way that it works is we simply go ahead, we select our formula, and then we paste our formula in here. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll just call this uh, webhook.com. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead, create the field, and now we're gonna jump in to make and create a new scenario. And so again, this here is going to be super familiar to what we've already done. Um, and that is going to be a sign that you've actually learned quite a bit. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to get a webhook. So that's step number one. And we are going to trigger when a when webhook data is received. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to create an a dashboard link. And we're gonna associate this with uh, Connor's Optrop. Lovely stuff. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy our URL and we're simply going to paste it into here. Now, um, Obviously, uh, I can now just immediately add the URL parameters that we're going to need. So we're going to need the account ID is equal to, and then we're going to go and, and we're going to select the account ID. Perfect. And then I'm not exactly sure if we're going to need this yet, but we are also going to add a URL parameter for the record ID. And so in case we need to update something inside of Webflow, which I don't think we will need to, but just in case we do, we can also add that in there. So we're gonna go ahead, record ID off. And now we should be good to go. So I'm just gonna have a quick little look at the URL and it all looks great. Okie dokie. So what we can do now is um, stop this and I'm gonna simply turn it on so that we're listening for the actual webhook. And then we're gonna test it by simply clicking onto it. We can see it was accepted and we can see that the data was passed through. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make our Stripe API call. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get our Stripe module up and we're gonna make an API call. Okie dokie. Now, uh, we're gonna go and have a look at the API docs and it turns out we don't actually need that much. So we're gonna just copy the URL. We're gonna copy it and we're gonna paste it in here now again it's relative to this path here which is api.stripe.com so we're just going to simply remove it now compared to the other urls there's actually a little bit more to this and as you can see here there's an account id already stored in here and so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to replace this static account id with a dynamic one so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight it and then we're simply going to replace it with this and then we're gonna change our method to post. But other than that, there is nothing else to do. You don't need to add any um, parameters. So all you need to do is just simply hit the okay button and you're good to go. Next, we wanna run this module and we are going to need a placeholder account ID. So let's go ahead and use this one here. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to simply paste this in here. And now we can see that was a test account made with TestMonkey. Okay, so I accidentally con um, connected the wrong account. So again, let's just try this part again. Paste. And we can now see that uh, it was accepted and that once again, it returns a URL. And so what we're gonna need to do now is just add the final part, which is the webhook response, which will basically send this URL that was generated back to the person that clicked on the link. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, select location, and then we're gonna populate this value with the connect ID link, just like that. And then we're gonna press okay. 
And so now what we can do is we can turn this on and test it. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to click on dashboard link and wait for it to fire. And just like that, our window opens up. Now your customer is going to get a confirmation email, uh, text message to their texts. And so I just got one here and I'm going to type in the code that I received. And now it will redirect me to my very own Stripe Express dashboard that will give me an overview of all of the payments and transactions that I've made. And so you can see here, I've got a pending transaction of $42.50, which is going to be for one of the products that I sold. So if we go into the transaction table, you can see here, seller amount $42.50, Doug Wayman, perfect stuff, all worked out perfectly. And so that way they will be able to keep track of all of their sales and all of their payouts inside of this nice looking dashboard. Now, once again, I just want to clarify something. Obviously these links here are currently sitting inside of your Airtable base and your uh, customers might not have access to these links. So the question is how exactly do you get them to actually click on this link that will then trigger the webhook? And there are a lot of different ways to do it. I mean, you can, for starters, it depends on the actual user account system that you're using so if you're using member stack what you would do is you would send this entire link here as a field to your member stack user account and then you would display this link dynamically inside of a dashboard page alternatively if you're doing it in glide like i am here with my membership things what you could do is simply um, put your buttons in here and then you could map these values of your buttons up to values that sit inside of one of your ear table tables and so because this record uh, is stored for a particular user you'll be able to dynamically populate these buttons buttons here with these webhook URLs and so that way whenever someone comes into their dashboard they log in do all that kind of stuff and they click this button they will be the ones who are firing this webhook and they will therefore be able to access the dashboard link and so just keep in mind that that is how you would use it um, once your user accounts are set up alternatively you could try and send them the link I've never done that by email or text message but in theory it should work um, but other than that that this is basically a, a little app that you have created that allows you to basically onboard sellers and allow them to add products and they can also access their own dashboard alrighty so catch up go through the process of setting up all of these workflows and even adapting it and to fit whatever marketplace you're working on again if you have questions or bugs drop them into the comment section down below and also hit the completed button so i've got one last video for you where i'm going to show you how you can clean out all of your test data from your stripe account and basically start from scratch and so that's what we're going to do in the next video so i'll see you there